Good morning, everybody, and how cool is this? I think I'm the first person to be in the office of the great Gary Varro. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Here in Brownsburg. This is really cool. Been yes. a fan for a long time. Thank we you. We seldom agree on things, but, yeah. you're, but I still think you're a genius. I really do. Oh, sweet. You're the, I, you're the one. I truly do. <laughs> this is your brand new book. Why not do a plug right from the beginning? Drawing the right way. Drawing the right way, and that's a little bit of a pun, I guess. Good yes. for you. You've left the star. But you're still publishing. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I'm with Creator Syndicate mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, so they sell my stuff to 125 newspapers nationwide. And uh, actually, I'm international. Toronto Sun runs my stuff now, too. So, uh, yeah, so I still do four cartoons a week, and they're out there, and, and newspapers are still running them. You were intrigued by drawing since you were a little kid, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, when I was in high school, that's when I realized that you can make a living at it. I met uh, Jerry Barnett, who was the editorial cartoonist yeah. at the Indianapolis News. And when I saw what he did for a living, which would he come in, he would come to work at eight in the morning, draw a cartoon, go home at noon. I said, where do you that's, sign up for that job? job. <laughs> Why are there, there really are relatively few of you. Yes. W and, but th there were once more. Sure. What happened? Well, technology changed a lot yeah. of things, but uh, like in, in the turn of the century, the 19, uh, 1900s, early 1900s, I think there were about 2,000 uh, no. editorial cartoonists, but newspapers were king. Uh, if you want to know what's going on, that's where you go. And so uh, by the time I got interested in it in 1974, there were 200, uh, and now there are less than 20. And you could make a case historically that people like you have made a difference. Change, change the world. Well, I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah. you look at, uh, well, Thomas Nast mm -hmm. certainly uh, made a difference, and he was kind of like the uh, founding father, I guess, of it, editorial exactly. cartoons. Hey, brag about two things on your yeah. wall. we got to do this quick because we're running out of time. Well, on this I've, first got a, I've got a cartoon that's signed by Donald Trump. Oh, my goodness. On the wall. Yeah. And uh, I have a letter from Barack Obama just below that. And then uh, on the other side, uh, to the left, there's a drawing that I did that's signed by Laura Bush and George Bush, President that's Bush. Awesome. Okay, you mentioned technology. Yes. We're going to show some cartoons from your book. We're going to show how Gary Varvel actually does a cartoon and how that has changed yes. over the years. It's really an amazing story. Do not go away. This is an exclusive. We're in his house. We'll be back. <laughs> That's a good point there. I knew, of course, he'd have stuff up on the walls, but it's amazing to see the presidential signatures oh. as well as the history. I mean, I grew up reading Marvel Comics, oh, you sure. know, and the Indie Star. That's right. amazing. That is cool. Uh, and obviously, it was very good stuff because. Dick Woolsey had to interrupt me for the eight-day forecast. So I'm glad we could get him so, in. Still sore about that. Glad we